<laughs> okay. Um, that was our virtual gavel this evening. And welcome to the Utility Service Board meeting on Monday, October 7th, uh, as we'll call this meeting to order. As a reminder, our CBU mission is to enhance the quality of life in our community by providing safe, sustainable, and high-quality drinking water, wastewater, and stormwater services in a cost-effective manner promoting health, public health, economic vitality, and environmental stewardship. And as a reminder, if any board member has any personal or financial conflict with any issues or individuals on the agenda, then please be sure to recuse yourself during those portions of the meeting. Our first item on the agenda is petitions and communications. Do we have any comments from the public? Hearing none, we'll move on with approval of our minutes from our previous meeting on September 23rd. Are there any questions or corrections? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have approval of the claims. First, we have standard invoices in the amount of $1,581,617.48. Are there any questions? Yes, Jeff. There was a, uh, I don't have the right document up, but it was Everett, and the number was 6311008, and the, the uh, memo or note was a bit cryptic, and I was just wondering what what that was for. There's another um, antenna for our AMI system to in, in increase capacity for okay. our meter reading. <laughs> Increased capacity yep. to, to uh, for the volume of mm -hmm. meter readers right. and reading. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Other questions? Anybody else? Quick question. Yes. Um, we have our set rate for vehicle parts and repairs um, that we've discussed. And then there's a charge for a front bumper repair from Bloomington Ford. Um, how does that happen? No, fleet doesn't do body work. Okay. okay. Thank you. Or uh, like, okay, so then a follow-up question. I guess, um, how do we determine like what fleet can do and then like the oil change tire rotation inspection, which is the next line? We just kind of go by what they say like they have schedule time availability for, yeah. and then it's mm -hmm. like, oh, we got to get this in and they have availability. Yeah, and then uh, obviously uh, police and fire have priority over us. Sure, too, so. yeah. So, okay. so sometimes we have to go get other repairs done as well. Okay. But, um, so I do understand that those are emergency vehicles mm -hmm. and sometimes our vehicles are emergency vehicles too though um so i know that's something that we've talked about like every time we get this bill nope. so i guess we're going to keep saying it until we look at the next um uh mo or the interlocal agreement i got it this time yes amanda matt i'm sure you have this information available to you but perhaps at the end of the year could we as the board get a an itemized list of what we have had to send out for vehicle repairs sure. yeah. and in that of those uh, now understanding that they don't do they don't do the body work of those what are ones that under our contract or our MOU could should yeah. have been handled by fleet yeah i get that and then i want to know how much we're paying to fleet what at the same time what have we sent over there um that they have been able to do i understand that we are number two or three or four or whatever on the list i get that but if we're going to be number two or three or four on the list and we can get it done cheaper at a different place without having the mou or quicker or quicker and on the time frame that we need and um, and support local business, wonderful. So I'd like to see that report by the end, at, at the at the end of the year. Okay. What, uh, d um, With the claims, the, well, the one before the claims one hearing? Or yeah, yeah. Okay. that would be good. Just a summary on that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, that's helpful for us to have, that information would be helpful for us to have because we do keep beating this, but we've never actually looked at the numbers mm -hmm. and said, Here's what we here's what they said they can't help us with, or here they said they could get to us in two weeks. We can't wait two weeks. So I've been having these conversations with Fleet in downtown for a very, very long time. Yeah. So. Well, let's see what we can maybe do. Yeah, no problem. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? 
Thank you. Um, okay, I have a couple. Number one, on page one, American Water Works Association for the membership fees, I think it was meant to be that it runs from 9124 to 83125, but I just wanted to comment on that. Uh, I would make that safe assumption, yes. Yes, thank we can, you. We can fix that. And those are, that's, um, uh, you know, quite an expensive membership, I guess, but that's one of our main, main ones. So um, I'm glad that we can provide that for nine members of our staff. Um, and then my second question was on page three, the emergency radio service. And we had, um, looks like five different units um, ranging from 4475 to $5,030. And I just couldn't remember um, since that, you know, kind of told it up to around $25,000 or so. Um, I just wasn't sure exactly what that was. I'm not sure either. Is James here? James, can we get your help here? says ERS OCI wireless, if that's oh, of any help. Okay. Oh, good. Those, <laughs> those letters Very mean something. Help. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, this kind of gets back to your other point. So mm -hmm. we purchased a bunch of new vehicles, not a bunch, but a few new vehicles at the beginning of the year. Fleet traditionally had installed uh, the safety lights and stuff on them. They couldn't do that. So uh, we went, this is a company that does all the police cars and outfits oh, all them okay. and so we use them sure. and so that's what you're seeing is the bill okay. for uh, most of those that like work yeah. that include that is actually the installation charge or the cost of the the both. parts to go on to it both okay both there's installation cost and the material thank you the lights. now since you mentioned it fleet couldn't do it. were they not available or is that not a service that they would provide they've done it in the past uh, for some reason they just he told me that if we wanted to get it done, we needed to contract. It didn't save a ton of time, I don't think, because it okay. took them a long time to get the lights in as well. Okay. We went a long time, but um, but yeah. Okay, but that's they had provided that service in, in the past. We had to pay somewhere twenty five thousand dollars somewhere it, else. It's more than that. Uh, that's okay. probably just the first bill of that. Oh, okay. So, Thank yeah. you. So, um, when we're pulling that report, maybe we could see if these emergency radio service would fall under that okay, category as well. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Hearing, hearing, yes? No, I'm sorry. No, no I'm okay. Sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the standard invoices? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have utility bills in the amount of $19,654.19. Are there any questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have wire transfers in the amount of $569,484.60. Are there any questions? Yes, Amanda. Is that supposed to say Tyler credit card fees or is that total credit card fees? It's Tyler. It is Tyler? It's the name of our software, yeah. Thank you. Yep. So actually, um, uh, thank you. And um, so my questions, or it's my monthly time to say that our Chase payment is $31,662.17, and then the NPC is $347.05 for the credit card fees. My, I did have a question, though. NPC, is that just a different credit card that people use for their payment, and that's why the fee is different? I think that that's was who we were using before, and we just need to get that canceled. Okay. It'll all be canceled January 1. Well, we'll be paying it, but we'll have the money to cover it. Now, is that decided yet? Yeah, we're working on to get that effective January okay. 1st. Okay, well, no, I'm sorry. I meant, are, is the customer, like, will receive the extra money to cover the fee, or it'll just be split out to them, right? It'll be split out split right out. away. We'll, we'll okay. never see that fee in our account. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, thank you. Okay. Any other questions about the wire transfers? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Finally, we have customer refunds in the amount of $4,025.09. Are there any questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on with the agenda, we have approval of our consent agenda in the amount of $9,234.70. 
Good evening. I'm Catherine Sager, Utilities Director. I'm presenting tonight's consent agenda totaling $9,234.70 for the non-chemical contracts. Uh, the first contract is with Set Environmental Inc. for $9,234.70 for the removal of chemical, clean lines, and store product and storing the product. Uh, then uh, we have one with Neo Water Treatment LLC for 82 cents per pound for the 2024 supply of Neo FX 300 at Blucher Wastewater Treatment Plant. Is there any member who wishes to consider one or more of these items individually? Hearing none, if there is no opposition, these items will be approved as recommended by staff. Hearing no opposition, the consent agenda is approved. Thank you. Next on the agenda is request for approval of a memorandum of understanding between the City of Bloomington Utilities and the Lake Lemon Conservancy District for Wetland Mitigation Plan. Adam Casey, welcome. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you for coming. Just for the record, please state your name for CAPS. Thank Adam you. Casey, uh, District Manager for the Lake Lemon Conservancy District. I'm sure everybody's seen the memorandum of understanding. I'll keep this short and sweet. I'm just gonna kind of give an update on the project and where we are. So first picture is a picture of the eastern portion of Lake Lemon where Bean Blossom Creek comes in. Um, after a rainstorm, you can really see the sediment loading that's going on. In 1970s, this was a bathymetric of the lake. You can really tell those darker gray colors that five to 10 feet, 10 to 15 feet kind of go throughout the entire lake and then get shallow towards the east end. If you pay attention to the callers, as we move into 2019, our most recent bathymetric, you can see almost all of those deep portions disappear. So major sediment coming into the lake, one of our biggest issues. Real quick historical perspective. Um, this is a peninsula that we have on Eastern Lake Lemon in 1963. That peninsula middle, we can use that as a frame of reference. And then in 2023, you can see how much vegetation's come in. We've lost close to 250, or 250 acres um, to, to sedimentation and then the creation of wetlands. So we started in 2019 working with Shrewsbury consultants to look at different options for a sediment capture and removal, how to make this most efficient as possible. This is one of our designs that we came up with. Ultimately, after doing our sediment transport studies and uh, many different types of studies, we realized the only option really is dredging in the lake. We have a close to 80 square mile watershed. It's all forested, it looks great on paper, lots of sediment coming in. So what we did is we moved forward with two of these disposal basins on the south side of the lake. Starting this project in 2019, uh, we required permitting from DNR, Army Corps of Engineers, IDEM, the whole gamut. So in 2019, we actually sold a $1.2 million bond to kick this project off. Purchased an off-road dump truck, this parcel of land on South Shore Drive for our first part of this disposal project. Per this permitting, there was two potential disposal sites, one being this upland site that we created, the second being the overflow pond that we've utilized. Uh, we had to utilize this site first before we can move on to that pond and the creation of the wetland just to make sure we were getting as much sediment out of the floodplain as possible. So we did build this pond, it's about seven acres at the rim, that's about 40 feet deep, and that had 130,000 capacity, yard, cubic yard capacity. Filled that up with hydraulic dredging over two years, 2022 and 2023. That's completely full, it is vegetated, and we're actually planning on reusing that again in the future. So as part of our permitting, since we filled this up, we were able to move on to the second basin. This is what the memorandum of understanding is. This is on the south side of South Shore Drive. All sediment that was placed in this area is below the normal pool level, so we're not impacting our floodplain or buffering capacity. It will be vegetated approximately 17 acres as an emergent wetland. And then as part of our permitting process, that would need to have um, essentially in perpetuity a, a conservation easement in place, so it has to remain natural. It's in the floodplain, so it can't be developed. Uh, we have five years to accomplish the success for the wetland. Um, if that were not to be successful, that would fall back on us for our permitting to take care of that. I don't think we'll have an issue getting that, and then it just needs to remain natural. So there's no cost to the City of Bloomington Utilities Board um, or any type of maintenance on that. 
One of the reasons we picked this is uh, this is a picture of the overflow pond with us testing. Usually after late July, the blue-green algae is insane. There's no connectivity or minimal with the lake, no vegetation, no wave action. Um, so hazardous algal bloom recreation limits are 100,000 cells. On here, we're seeing well over 600,000 cells, and that's just kind of the standard um, way that this pond looks every year. So we thought it was great to have the environmental uplift filtration capacity of the wetland. Here's the type of barge that we actually used for this project is the 14 inch hydraulic barge that we brought in. Um, and here's a picture of it on the water. It's pretty cool. It can actually cut like a 90 to 100 foot swath and we move right through the areas that we're looking at dredging. Here's a picture of the overflow pond as it is now. We do have the silt curtains in there. Our water level is actually about 10 inches below our normal pool during the drought which is why you can see that sediment level right there. But this is where that planting will be. This image is the areas that we actually had sediment removed from during this 2024 project. If we add into that the areas that we had removed in 2022 and 2023, a lot of this was down to less than two foot deep. We've cut it all to six or seven feet to provide safe recreation. And one of the goals is to keep that eastern portion deep enough to act as a sediment catcher. So moving forward, we can be more efficient at removing sediment. Overall, um, with these two projects the past couple of years, we removed 137,000 yards this year with that hydraulic barge. Between 2022 and 24, for this kind of project going on, we removed 272,000 yards and we've reclaimed a little over 80 acres of area in Lake Lemon um, for safe recreation and sediment capture there. So throughout the Conservancy, over 400,000 yards removed and then 65% of our total yardage removed in that time was the past three years with this new technology. So that's where we are. Um, the final portion of this permitting is that wetland. We have awarded a contract for the creation of the wetland to Davy Resource Group. We'll be coming in, the timeline on that is uh, 2025 would be the planting in the spring, and then our monitoring and maintenance periods will begin in 2026. Minimum of a three-year monitoring period per item, and then up to five years to achieve success in that area. Do I have any questions? Thank you so much for Thank that you. great report. I remember seeing um, some of this information a few years ago, and so it's great to see the progression yes. and um, a great statistic that 80 acres have been reclaimed. So thank you. Um, do we have questions? Yes, Jeff. Hi, Adam. Hi. Um, good to see you. Uh, so my only question uh, hinges on the idea of perpetuity and in light of potential changes to the dam functioning. I mean, I just read an article about all these uh, USDA dams mm -hmm. that there's no 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 longer under federal contract and no money to to do anything with. This situation may be different. I understand, but just in, when we say perpetuity and we think about a lake, um, you know, the lake is not going to be there in the same way in perpetuity. So so that's a concern. Okay. Just just the. And, and the dam may or may not be there, it may or may not be functioning the way it was originally intended to. It may, you know, they may V-notch it, breach it, whatever. It, that could happen naturally. It could be a part of a plan. The dam could be removed. So, so there's that. Climate change, we could have a change in the hydrological regime, regime which would support that particular wetland. Mm -hmm. And then changes also in climate that could affect those key indicator species that are in that 2008 manual that's listed. So there's, there's, to me, there's things in the legal documents um, where we don't have an out and, and, and you guys don't have an out in case these things change. And, and when, when I read it, that's what struck me as, um, as a concern. So I don't know if that's a concern to city legal uh, you know, to, well, to, to, sorry, utilities legal, Chris, or to um, Lake Lemon Conservancy District. So, Please. Okay, so the way the easement is written is it specifies just that 17 acre parcel. Sure. And there is no legal tie to the dam or the lake in that. So I believe if the lake were to go away and the hydraulics changed in that area, as long as we're still leaving, 
that seven acre parcel kind of natural. I do not believe there would be any legal or negative ramifications on that. Regarding the dam, we are one of only a couple high hazard dams in the state with a satisfactory rating. Um, so we do stay on the maintenance of that. Um, but I guess the biggest thing would be like it's referring specifically to that 17 acres and not to changes in the future due to, due to the dam or the lake hydrology. And, and to a specific well, set of species listed in a 2008 manual that may or may not be supported in the future. Correct. Those particular species. The maintenance portion of that though to achieve success is within that five year period. Beyond that, there are no maintenance regulations. Okay. So as long as we have the specific ratios of the plants, when they say this is success, after that it's left to its natural forces and there's not ongoing, not there's, there's no maintenance species, in perpetuity. 20%, no, no Correct. species dominant, Correct. more than 20%, those things. Yeah. So when no. you say natural state, that's why you have confidence in that. I do, correct. So once we achieve their, their specifications, after that, there's not maintenance associated with that. They, they're calling that good and a success, um, so there wouldn't be maintenance in the future on that. Okay, and, and this property could function as a wetland independent on whether the lake is there or not? I believe so. There's drainage that comes to that area. Um, and Les Monroe County Highway Department drastically changes. It actually does retain water that comes off of its kind of sub-watershed there. So there's water moving through that area pretty frequent, frequently that gets dammed up behind those culverts on the, the long causeway there. So then to me, the only concern would be, um, you know, we're committing to 17 acres of our property, putting in a conservation easement, assuming that's going to be the best pop possible land use for that parcel in perpetuity. <laughs> it's just hard to, uh, hard to um, make that assumption for me, but, mm -hmm. you know, we have to have, I guess, some confidence going forward that it, it can remain natural and that's the best intended use for, for into perpetuity so and it is in the floodplain so that whole area is in the floodplain so if you've been paying attention to the new city ordinances coming out um, they've gotten really strict on development in the floodplains raising levels there um, so it would never be out of that floodplain it would always be in that bean blossom watershed floodplain corridor limiting development potential as long as we have streams that flow through there, so. In perpetuity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. so I, do, I don't believe it would ever be developed under, under the guidance and ordinances of Monroe County, especially with the new flood damage prevention and MS4 regulations. So. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. Other people have questions or comments? All right, well, hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding between the City of Bloomington Utilities and the Lake Lemon Conservancy District for the Wetland Mitigation Plan? So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so right, much you for your time much. and all of your information and your work. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have approval of resolution 2024-16 resolution to designate property as worthless. So if I add our Dillman plant, there's a building down by the drying beds that's referred to as the Polymer Building. Uh, there is a huge tank in that building that was, uh, the building was built around because there's no way to get it out of the building. Uh, they don't use the tank anymore, have it for, for quite a while, and so they like to get it out of there um, and use that space for, for other storage. Thank you. Yeah. Questions for Matt? Hearing none, do we have um, a, a motion to approve resolution 2024-16? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Thank you. Old business. Do we have any old business from the board? Old business from staff? None. New business from the board? Um, I would just bring, I'll just mention it. I had mentioned it to Kat today. Um, so this year we're so glad that we've got Kat in place as our director, but as a board, we never had a time to get together and have a retreat. And so I think, um, you know, at some time this fall, I'd like to get on the calendar for early next year, um, the, the, a date for a retreat, whether it's a full day or a half a day of time, we can review procedures and policies and different things and um, the comprehensive plan and, and different things. Um, and then um, 
that way that we would be ready to roll right into the new year rather than like, oh, it's March already. So I think just Frank, if you would please add that to our list of all the things you do for us. Thank you. Um, any other new business from the board? Okay, new business from staff. No, okay. Um, subcommittee report. Today we had an administrative subcommittee meeting and Chairwoman Molly, please give us this report. So we um, looked at three different sections of the rules and regulations uh, updates that had been proposed by um, CBU and how much detail do you want me to go into? Um, well, I think each resolution okay. would need a scoop and then a proposal. Yeah. So the first one was about billing and payment, um, clarifying on uh, that landlords will no longer be responsible for water bills that are delinquent. Uh, the second one is about termination of service. So um, involuntary termination for a delinquent bill will now allow electronic communications to, um, to contact CBU um, to get that hooked up again. And then the third one was section 24 about the comprehensive plan and clarifies the language about exceptions for sewer extension um, being con contiguous properties only. Um, that's, that's it. Thank you. Any questions for Molly? And on the last yes. issue, what was the proposal? It was um, basically just putting in the regulations what the city's current policy is on sewer extension so that there's no discretion left up to the director of CBU anymore for an appeals process for the board yeah I I, um, I guess I'm not ready to, to vote on that but if everyone else is that's fine Questions or comments? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess. I guess so. Um, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I just no, no. Else. I mean, I I was thinking about questions and and I didn't wasn't planning to bring them up, but I, um, I mean, I, I guess I, I would want to understand answers to three questions. Two, two really. Um, the third one's. Uh, more negotiations, but so does that position, the administrator's, administration's position or office of the mayor, whatever you want to call it, does that fit with the reality of our capacity, the ease to which we can extend that capacity and our mission statement? Did we, do we think we've answered those questions? I'm not sure we have. Um, you know, the, what, what the deputy mayor said was, um, the city aims to prevent extending services to non-contiguous areas based on good faith that they might one day be annexed. Doing so could strain infrastructure capacity. This is right out of our minutes. Doing so could strain infrastructure capacity, potentially leading contiguous neighborhoods, which could be annexed without access to city services. Uh, Knapp emphasized that while maintaining infrastructure is a ratepayer issue, it's also a broader city issue. The city's priority is ensuring utilities serve city residents. So there, there's this, um, this concern that we won't have capacity to serve uh, city within the boundary city residents if we extend services. Do we know if this, I mean, is this a valid concern? And, and if it is, we've added, we've added capacity to our infrastructure before so what are the trade-offs and opportunity costs of this board adopting the city's position? That is, going along with changes to this rule. I mean, did, have we really thought this through? Are we prepared to do this and say, yep, it, we just, you know, it's, it's, it's too important. Uh, we're not going to be able to extend capacity much. So uh, everyone just needs to go on septic if they want to build outside the city limits. Are we really prepared to do that right now? Have we really looked at this in depth and, and talked about the, the feasibility of extending capacity? 
versus making that decision right now and going along with the city's position? That's that's just the Jeff, question Jeff, I'm asking. This board is the city. The, the Utility Service Board and City of Bloomington Utilities is the city. Well, this is an administrative. No, they are that's not separate. Not correct. This that's is not part correct. This board was created because the city council did not have the capacity, the bandwidth, you, you, to deal you're with you're US. Speaking, you're speaking incorrectly. Uh, well, I, I disagree. Okay, I mean, that's look fine. At the history we can of this, disagree. Why the board was created. You, you are a member of an administrative uh, body of the city of Bloomington. Right, and, and there is the, there's the city council that would need to approve this ordinance and the administration that is putting forth a policy change, right? What ordinance are you referring to? Rules and regulations changes. Oh, to Not just an internal? Yeah, so oh. it's just us. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, I would think that, that if there is a, I, I'm, I'm an error then. Okay. Yeah. But I think the changes yeah. to these I thought we were changing a, a, a city ordinance. No. Help no, this is rules and regulations today. Okay. Yeah. My, my apologies. Okay. Yeah, my apologies. It, it would be a different process if we needed an ordinance changed. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I thought we were somehow vo voting on moving forward an ordinance change. Oh, no. Yeah. So <laughs> we're, what we're looking at is Section 24, the comprehensive plan of our rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is... Um, because the waiver process is no longer something that we can rely upon. I, I got that. We're pulling the waiver language out of Section 24, but that also then requires us to take out those discretionary things because the discretionary items of the director only were triggered if a waiver was provided. Uh, well, we're not accepting waivers anymore because of legislative damage to our waiver process. So we're eliminating the waiver language and the discretionary language of the director. Um, what we're left with is still the opportunity for voluntary annexation, which was there all along. So that's all we're doing is getting rid of that discretionary section of section 24. Okay. Well, you know, <clears throat> uh, I, um, I apologize for not being aware of uh, the content and, and taking that out of context and not being at the, the meeting earlier. So All I'll, right. uh, I'll stand down on this. Thank you. Any other questions? Kurt. Kurt. I'd, my comment would be that uh, I'm just hopeful that once, once the annexation questions that are currently in litigation with the city, once those get settled, we can look at this again because we'd be in a different position then. All of the things in the courts that this kind of a decision we would make could play into discovery for uh, the, the, the sides in, in this legal dispute. So we don't want to go there, but once that's resolved, then it would be great for us to be able to go back and s to revisit this and say, okay, that's all resolved. Now how much leeway do we have to extend service? And go back, you know, the, whether it's waivers, whether whatever it is, I just hope we can be on the record as coming back and looking at this when it's resolved. In the courts. And that's fine if it's a matter of the waivers and having confidence that, or you know, ha this other idea had been proposed about um, deed restrictions, right? And 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 the the office of the mayor's attitude was that, and legals that those we we would have no confidence with those as well because of what's happened with the the waivers of annexation. So that's not a route either. So, so if that's really the issue. <laughs> And it doesn't have to do with capacity, fine, but this, this capacity issue was brought up. And, and I, 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 I'm just objecting to the fact that that's a given, because I don't think it is. And I don't think we should just assume that, that we don't have the wherewithal to, to provide for people outside the city limits. I'll allow engineering to address capacity issues. I know that we do have a concern with capacity as, as, as an ongoing issue and that we do have to be careful with just how much is available for us to put online. Uh, and so 
knowing those limitations and concerns, uh, it is important right now for us to focus on those who are within the city. That is a genuine concern. Uh, uh, but that, that certainly does, we would have to look very long and hard at how our capacity changes when and if large annexations occur. Uh, and those, those concerns are addressed in the annexation lawsuit uh, as far as what, what, do, what does the city currently have as capacity and would it be able to accommodate what we were asking to annex in that litigation. And that's about as far as I feel comfortable well, going. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we were asking for that annexation to occur. Yeah, yeah. The assumption would, would be that we're gonna, we would be able to provide that by expanding Correct. the plant. So. Correct. I'm, I think it's disingenuous to, to say that, that we just wouldn't be able to, to provide for people outside the city limits. And uh, Philippine Engineering, so looking at capacity, we get a lot of requests, and more recently we've been getting quite a few on the west side of Bloomington where they might be adding industrial use or some, some really large user. And so we've had to look at the local capacity that the sewer that they are directly tying into in their sewer shed and then that the interceptors further downstream closer to Dillman. And so those, as you know, we, we are moving forward with the design of the Dillman relief sewer and some of those capacity improvements are being put on the developers uh, responsibility to pay for the capacity that they are taking up in that they're not, they're not, uh, paying for the whole project or f so that other other folks in the city can tie into that they are paying for their capacity within that Dillman relief sewer but we we have had several instances where uh, places come in they want they want to use a half a million gallons a day or 800,000 gallons per day and so that's a that's a really extreme amount that's going to put on that local system and so not only that but then the treatment plant too so we do look at a lot of that um, and I think those larger ones have a significant impact that where we wouldn't have the capacity uh, whether it's local or downstream but a lot of the smaller re residential is not doesn't seem to be an, as an effect on, on the capacity, but uh, these large users do. Just since you mentioned, uh, thank you for that additional information, not my question, but you mentioned the west side, but I mean, I think a lot of that area where I'm thinking of is outside of the city limits. So then they're not, they're gonna just be told no at the get-go because they're not in the city, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's correct. Yeah, and, it, and what you see also on that when you start to go outside of where we currently serve, it's harder to serve. You can't necessarily serve at gravity. There's gonna to have to be a pump lift station to, to get it to the gravity. That, this is what you see as you look around the perimeter of the city boundary. So that, that adds another capacity challenge because then you're, you're lifting to a lift station that may flow to another lift station that flows to another lift station. They, they kind of leapfrog as they go, uh, you know, especially there on the west side along Curry Pike. I think we have four lift stations that pump to one another before they actually get to the gravity system. So you have to get, check each capacity of each lift station when you add flow at that outer edge. Amanda? I just wanted to, I said this in the previous uh, committee meeting, but I just wanted to thank all of the staff, both at the city legal and um, the folks here for taking to heart what we as the board had asked to get answers for. I, we've, I think we've been asking for this since April. So uh, it, we know that all of you have put in a lot of time and effort to try to get to this point so that, again, we're not, we're not wasting our time as a board. You're not wasting your time as staff. And more so the people that are putting forward the appeals um, are paying for lawyers and are paying for things that that we can't do anything right now because of the litigation that's going on. Um, the mayor's office came in and told us what, you know, what has happened. Um, and we're, we're in this position right now. So the fact that we've changed our policies and procedures to reflect this, this time that we're in. And I fully um, agree and support with what Kirk said. When this gets resolved, let's we we there will be times that we need to be able to do this and we and we should be able to address it um, but right now we're you know we're just kind of at a stalemate and you know someone can still come in and uh, you know someone can still come in and come in and appeal but at least our our rules and regulations are are firm for what we have the ability to do so i again thank you very much Thank you. 
just a couple of comments. I think this has been a good discussion. I think in the big picture strategically, as we're looking at what's happening in economic development, particularly along our corridor, from Indianapolis to Crane to Evansville, we're seeing a lot of new uh, development that we hadn't really imagined 10 or 20 years ago. Uh, if you look down at at the Crane Westgate 231 area, they're having, they just got a big new um, significant grant from EDA, I think $4 million to, with local match to expand sewer capacity down there so that they, they can meet the requirements of these new microchip plants that are are um, proposed and are, are going to be under construction down there. The difference in a lot of areas in Indiana is we've got water and they don't. We got a lot of it. We got a lot of capacity and, and I feel pretty confident about our ability to meet more capacity if we have those opportunities for economic development. Um, and that's a good thing if you look at the big picture. So I think as we look 10 or 20 years down the road, we need to be thinking about how we would expand capacity if we had these opportunities to bring um, large users in that are going to employ people and continue to let the economy grow in the community. We need to think along those lines. Now, on the annexation side, you know, I think some people get nervous about, okay, well, if the city was going to annex all this, how would we provide the service? How would we provide water and sewer to all them? It takes time, once you annex, it takes time to, to even put the infrastructure in in neighborhoods, perhaps. And during that time that we'd be doing that, uh, you'd have an opportunity to build plant capacity at the same time. That's my point. It's a, it, you're, you can work at the same time to build plant capacity at the time you're building infrastructure to get it to the plant in the neighborhoods. So it gives you some flexibility in there to, to, to reach these requirements we have with large annexation plots. I think we can do that too. And predictability. Yeah, yeah. 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 I guess I'll kind of cover a couple things here. Um, so number one, and I said this in the um, subcommittee meeting, um, echo Amanda's sentiments appreciative of what our staff has done. Um, and um, I appreciate having the directive from the mayor. I feel like that, I can see where you were headed earlier, Jeff. Like um, you don't, there, you just feel like this is, we just have to accept this as what it is, or at least that's how I felt you were saying. Um, and um, so while I disagree, um, I can follow, I can follow what it, we were asked to do. Um, and so um, with the annexation, a, a couple comments, one being that um, many of the customers, that were in, many people in the areas to be annexed already receive sewer services. So that, I guess, applies to the waivers, but we're already included in the capacity. So like I am in an area put, you know, um, that was to be annexed and I receive sewer services. So um, you know, that wouldn't be an additional property that needs to be served. Um, and then also, um, I do hope that this can be revisited whenever this, um, the litigation is uh, concluded, because I hate that we have um, projects that are caught in the middle, um, like our West Side Christian Church, who came and presented um, six or eight weeks ago. And, um, you know, their project is in limbo. Do they wait this out to see what, what'll happen? Um, and then, and I think how we left it at that meeting was we want more information from the mayor's office, but we'd like our staff to see if that was something that, you know, under the previous rules, would this have been extended? Or could this, could this have been extended um, as part of the appeals questioning? Um, and so I hate that, that those folks and others like them, um, you know, will have their projects either put on hold or be forced to, you know, they do want to move forward and have to do an alternative septic system or something. Um, and then I didn't address it at the time, but I guess it's still on my mind, so I'll say it. Um, I, was, I was put on the spot at that meeting when we voted and um, about, you know, how we wanted to ask staff to proceed. 
Um, and I was, I guess, told, uh, uh, or it was phrased to me that I could have been in conflict of interest with that church. And um, because of being a witness in the trial against annexation, and I have no, uh, I didn't know any of the people that were here. I'm not affiliated with that church. Um, and um, so I, I, I didn't have a conflict of interest, and how that vote went down was different, taking out my vote, um, because it, it could have been a four to three, and then it was a three to three, and then it was, a, it was dead. And um, I, I was disappointed that I was led in that direction. So I didn't say anything at the time, but since it came back up, then I just felt like I would comment about it today. So um, having said that, um, back to our, mo our agenda item, which was the subcommittee report and updating the um, rules and regulations for section 24, then um, I, I think that that matches what the memo has asked for us to do. And so that until there is res res resolution um, one way or the other, then I think that that is what that we are going to have to follow. So, so. Is there Call any the other question. discussion on that? Yes. Yes. So Call is the question. Yes. Is there a motion to approve the three um, subcommittee um, revisions to the comprehensive, I'm sorry, to the rules and regulations, including section four, section seven. Oh, sorry. Molly does it. Okay, yeah, fine. Yes. Yeah, sorry. You're the, you're the, you're the subcommittee you're chair. You're the subcommittee chair. Okay. Put a reminder that we wanted to add the word email after telephone. Yes. Include the amendment. I don't know how to start this. Is there so there's, a motion? there's a motion, there a motion to, to approve. Here, so you're, I move that we approve. Oh, yeah. I move that we approve the three sections of the um, rules and regulations as proposed by staff with the addition of email to section three, or to section seven. Oh, yes, seven, 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 sorry. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Staff reports. Yes. Um, we would like to congratulate Tamala Bruce Riney, uh, who was promoted to utility specialist too. Great, congratulations. That's all we've had. Thank you, okay. Um, are there any additional petitions and communications or public comment? Okay. okay. Um, hearing none, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Maybe the virtual gavel. Okay, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>